what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and in this one, i'm going to be talking about the spy the nasdaq the qqqs and the indices break down a lot of the charts right now and what they're telling us and talk about why the market is pumping right now and why the odds are favoring a continuation going into tomorrow now before i break anything down about this though before i get into any more details i do have to mention a couple of things before starting firstly i'm not a financial planner make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever and also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just four days. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So anyway, SPY is up 1.25% as of right now. I'm recording this actually very close to power hour and the market is continuing to pump. But the question is, will the market end up dumping or will we just continue to rip to the moon from here on out? And the answer is, most likely, we're going to actually see a continuation, in my opinion. However, I'm still very open to any possibility because we have bank earnings coming out for tomorrow. But I want to talk about why the odds are now actually favoring something very, very unexpected. Now, let's actually start off with yesterday. So yesterday, I talked about how we had some bearish signals that are actually still present right now. Because if you look at the chart, we're making a higher high, right? But the RSI is making a lower high. So this tells us that, yes, a reversal will likely come in the future keyword future i'm not saying it has to start tomorrow i'm not saying it has to start immediately but there is going to likely be a reversal but the thing about this is this could still be developing which means we could just keep pumping and pumping and pumping a little bit more we could pump a few more dollars to the upside go higher and higher and this this divergence could still be present and then this divergence can mark another top and then the reversal later on and that's the really tricky thing about this right now is because we're not really running solely based off technicals or mainly because of them. We're running based off the option chain and based off the news and data that's coming out. Now, in my video from yesterday, I also told you guys that we had the PPI report coming out and initial jobless claims numbers. And I told you all that we're going to react to it. We could pump or we could dump. But I was actually a little bit more bearish because of the fact that we were hit with some very bearish news technically. First off, CPI, of course, CPI was a little bit too hot. And on top of that, some of the Fed officials came out and they said a recession is very likely, or it's quite likely we could see a mild recession, right? So there was a very big shift. And despite all of that, despite the macros and what's actually going on, the market just continued to pump. So now that the market made this move, I want to break down the charts from this perspective and now talk about what's happening tomorrow and how that could actually affect the market and why this could actually lead to more upside but first let's talk about the data ppi came out this was actually down month over month core ppi was down month over month as well and initial jobless claims were very good for the markets first off with ppi core ppi was only 3.4 percent and the forecast was 3.5 percent so a very big improvement ppi year over year the normal number that's very collective that was 2.7 percent the forecast was 3.2 percent so we're actually seeing inflation from the producer side slowing down right now that's actually a good sign for producers but this does not guarantee anything for cpi as of right now but it is actually showing some signs of some possible progress but i'm still very open-minded because in the future going into the summer it's still very possible for everything to change because of what's going to happen to energy in my opinion so i'm not saying that this guarantees anything for like the longer term but as of right now the market loved this core ppi was actually lower than expected so was ppi in general and the producer price index or the inflationary measure for them looked better than expected the market loved it but on top of that we also had initial jobless claims we wanted 234,000. We got 239,000. So more initial jobless claims than expected, which is good for the stock market. It is not good for the economy because once again, unemployment is going up. People are losing jobs faster now, right? More Americans are going to start struggling, unfortunately. And my heart goes out to everyone out there that is struggling during times like this. But you have to remember the market's perspective. The market wants pain for the job sector. They want more unemployment because this will help drag down inflation and on top of that you have to look at jobless claims from the four week average we had 240,000 once again above above the forecast so once again this was more bullish for the stock market that's part of why the market started pumping today 
right? That's despite what the technicals were telling us yesterday. The market just decided to keep going. But there's another reason, and that's also because of the options chain on SPY. An additional almost 200,000 puts were opened just yesterday. That is insane. So a lot of people started shorting and shorting and shorting. They, they, they were looking at what the Fed was saying during the FOMC minutes. They were looking at the fact that some Fed speakers are saying that a recession is likely now. They were looking at a hotter than expected core CPI. And a lot of people started shorting for Friday. And the market ended up doing the opposite. It ended up just hurting all those people. It's pretty incredible how this keeps on happening. And what's happening is now we have 766,000 puts expiring tomorrow. And we have just under 400,000 calls expiring tomorrow. We have a 2.06 put to call ratio with max pan 407. So what essentially happens during times like this is when the majority of investors have puts, they're shorting and shorting and shorting. The market makers are going to look at this and say, we're not paying out those premiums. So they start pumping the markets. They find an excuse, a reason to pump the markets more and more. And as they do this, it causes pain for those investors. That's their main goal. They do not want to, the, the market basically tries to cause as much pain for as many people as possible. And because there's so many puts again expiring tomorrow, they're going to keep on pumping the markets most likely. Now, even though the odds are favoring this continuing, please be open-minded to anything just in case. The market did gap up. There are gaps below, so we have to be very cautious. And even though the odds do favor upside, be prepared for this. Tomorrow before the market opens, JP Morgan Chase, United Health Group, Citi, Wells Fargo, PNC, BlackRock, they're going to be reporting their earnings. This is super important for the market, especially JP Morgan and Citi. I'm saying this because if the banks, let's just say they do very well. If the banks do well, that's going to be unexpected because the market's expecting the banks to not do too well because of what just happened with SVB, because of the banking crisis and et cetera. We're expecting, or at least the market's expecting the banks to not do too well. If they do well, the market's going to pump. If they do okay, the market is still going to pump. And when it comes to them doing bad, it depends on how bad they do. If they do horrendous, this could crash the markets. If they do as bad as expected, this could also hurt the markets. But if they do bad, but not as bad as the market was expecting, this could also pump the markets. Because once again, the situation could actually help fuel the narrative that, oh, the banks are going to be fine. We don't have to worry as much. They have a lot of leverage thanks to the Fed, exactly like what Janet Yellen has been saying. So we have to watch this carefully. We're going to be watching the EPSs, their guidance, and what they tell us. Make sure you're very careful with the data coming out tomorrow. Right? This could break the market rally, or it could actually cause us to continue. But based off the options chain, based off what I'm seeing, the odds are favoring the market continuing to pump. It's looking very strong now. But I just want to inform everyone, there is still a bearish divergence developing, keyword developing. It's not necessarily done. And this is telling me maybe we could keep going, but as long as the RSI remains below the, the pump peak right here where 82 was during these peaks, then as long as that happens, there's still going to be the potential for us to reverse in the future. I just don't know where the peak is going to be. We could keep on going higher and higher and higher, and the odds are favoring that. So now let's break down the charts. What are they essentially telling us? When we zoom out, all right, it looks like this. We're still actually in this uptrend on SPY. We're just continuing to channel back and forth and back and forth. We actually bounced off this. And this was actually a little bit unexpected. Like I said before, the technicals were looking more bearish yesterday. The news was very bearish, but the market just continues to cause pain for as many shorts as possible. And now it depends on the banks. Uh, in my opinion, if we're bearish, okay, this is just a hypothetical possibility. If we're bearish, what's likely going to happen is SPY is going to retest this four. Uh, 11.5 area and then we're going to continue to drop we, we're going to fill this gap around 407 and we could potentially continue to downtrend there are more gaps below so if we do downtrend more and more they could get filled that's the more bearish case the more bullish case is going to be a retest of this 414 resistance and we could even like get close to that today but if we break above this 416 becomes possible if not a little bit higher and we could actually retest the highs that were made right about here the highs right here, it, it could be retested this 416 to 418 area if we do actually get a break above 414. Now, I want to note that on the daily chart, SPY had this, we have two things going on. The first thing you could argue is, well, zooming into it, we do have this inverse head and shoulders, right? This 
inverse head and shoulder right here. The odds of us forming this was actually, or completing this was actually more slim yesterday because of what happened on the news and also because of the bearish divergence. But now that we're continuing to break the highs and we have this like very bullish looking daily candle, there's a good chance it might just continue and end up playing out, which would actually bring SPY all the way up closer to like 416. But I also want to remind you all, for the bears out there, uh, we do have this possible uh, inverse head and shoulder. I'm sorry, head and shoulders right here. Sorry about that. Head and shoulder, the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder could still be forming if we do fail to break the high we made previously. So it's very mixed, like I said. Uh, they were trying to trick a lot of people into looking at this head and shoulder and then thinking that, oh, the market would just tank from here, start crashing immediately as we did have a bearish divergence. The technicals were telling us that would likely happen, but so far the chart looks like it might just try to keep going. This, inver this, this head and shoulders so far is not necessarily uh, invalidated. It is still valid technically, but if we keep pushing and pushing and we retest these highs and even break them, then we could invalidate it. So that's why we have to be very, very careful right now. But I want to note that for tomorrow specifically, all right, for tomorrow, I'm prepared for anything because of the bank earnings. I'm prepared for anything. But I know that the odds are favoring that it's more likely we're going to continue pushing and SPY is going to get to like 416, if not a little bit higher. All right, so that's what I'm essentially seeing. All right. And with that said, I want to talk about other things. What else is a little bit more bullish for the markets is the dollar failed. The dollar looked like it wanted to break out. The dollar looked like it had some strength and it ended up failing again. I'm talking about strength because of this uh, potential PPO crossover right here. The dollar ended up just, you know, looking very weak and broke below its key support. And this is once again helping the market pump even more. And because the dollar is just continuing to drop and drop and drop, it's barely testing 101 now. This is once again bullish for the markets. If it keeps dropping, that's also going to be bullish for the markets again. For Tesla, once again, it all depends on what happens tomorrow with the bank earnings. If bank earnings are really bad, it's going to likely come back all the way down to 180. If it's bullish, it's going to break above 190 and possibly get closer to either 192 or 195 in just one day and one to two days from now. It's also getting very close to earnings. As earnings approaches, Tesla tends to actually rally and there's a good chance it could actually do that next week. Now, I also want to note that for Tesla, I told you guys that we had a very critical level on it. It had to bounce off either 180 or 176 and in my opinion i was thinking that it might come down to 176 then bounce or 180 could have been the area but i wasn't too sure depending on the data but i was still trying to be open-minded and it ended up bouncing off 180 which is a very very good sign it technically made a higher low and i mean you could argue there's a possible inverse head and shoulders forming i mean it's not really clean but it is a possibility and this could help tesla continue to pump above 190 very very soon but be prepared for anything because of the bank earnings. I'm just saying that the odds are favoring more upside based off what the dollar is doing and based off, you know, the options chains and everything like that. AMC is looking bullish. I'm going to keep this one short. Uh, so far, it's holding up nicely above 5.34. If it keeps going, we could get a retest of 5.5, break that, then 5.78 becomes possible. The odds are now favoring upside a little bit more uh, because of what's happening. For NEO... I was actually incorrect about this thing actually breaking below $9. It's barely holding about 9.08. We'll have to see if $9 holds tomorrow. If it holds, it might just chop around here. But so far, this head and shoulders is still valid for Neo. It has not invalidated it by breaking it to the upside very hard. It hasn't also like fully played out just yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. But in my opinion, we might see Neo chop around a little bit. It's still looking relatively weak compared to the markets. And if that's the case, Eventually, NEO might end up coming down below $9. It just might take a little bit longer than expected. Until then, it's just getting very tight and chopping around a bit. If the market pumps, it could help NEO try to get back to about uh, 9.26, I think, or 9.24, sorry, and then 9.36. But other than that, it's, it's just very tight, not really doing too much. Uh, we also have the HYGs also pumping. This is actually very interesting. If it breaks 75, I'm going to be watching how it actually reacts to 75.65. Uh, if it breaks all the way up there, then the next very important level I was watching was around the 77.34 area. If it just keeps breaking out, that is very possible. And if that's the case, it would be bullish for the market going forward. Microsoft, I mean, I was once again talking about how 
Microsoft had this possible head and shoulders developing, but now that it's actually retesting this gap resistance, it might actually invalidate this head and shoulders possibility. And if it does do that, it, it really depends on how it actually moves right here. If this thing breaks out, it could actually try to invalidate it and fill this gap and get closer to 290. That's very possible. And if it does end up doing that, if it fills this gap, it could actually break out even higher. But we have to see how it reacts to this gap fill right here. And so far, it's actually forming like a right shoulder. So it needs more confirmation. But so far, the odds are favoring this thing trying to fill that gap and actually surprising a lot of investors. The odds are still favoring that because of what I said about the market makers and also the options chains. For the QQQ, this is actually looking pretty strong now. Very, very interesting stuff. If it's bearish, a break below the 50 EMA would actually take us all the way down to 316. And if that fails, then it's going to fill this gap down here. If it's bullish, it's going to retest 320 to 321. If it breaks that, 324.5 becomes a possibility. That would be pretty insane if it actually pumped that much. Uh, what do I think is going to happen? I'm not sure, by the way. It depends on the bank earnings. But the odds are favoring, the probabilities are favoring more upside for the triple Q to get above 320, if not pumping even above 321 to try to actually retest the highs right here, if not break them very, very soon. The odds are now favoring that. And if it does break these highs, like I said, we could get closer to the mid 320s before we do make another big move. Amazon holding up nicely. Uh, it's actually above 102 at the time I'm recording this. If we're bearish, it's going to come all the way down to 98. If we're bullish, it's going to pump all the way up to 104. If it breaks, that 105 becomes possible. Uh, we do have a possible. Now, we, we were almost forming, once again, a head and shoulders. Uh, it, it looks to me like if we retest 104 and we break it, we could invalidate the head and shoulders, and Amazon could keep going for that notorious 105. NVIDIA, in my opinion, it, it has this head and shoulders, but it hasn't actually like fully developed yet. We're not getting the big sell-off. And as long as the market holds up, as long as they, they try to pump the markets more, the video could try to keep going. It might actually surprise a lot of people and try to get back above 270. If that's the case, it could actually get all the way up to about this 275 resistance, the zone right here, if it breaks 270. And this could happen tomorrow if we're bullish on the bank earnings. But if we're bearish, always be prepared for that. If it's really bearish and the market ends up just collapsing, then there's a greater probability that this head and shoulders end up, ends up playing out and this thing just ends up sinking below the 260 area. But like I said before, the odds are favoring that NVIDIA is going to actually pump above 270, maybe see 275 soon. The VIX is looking very weak, really weak. It actually broke below 18.5, 18.2. Now it's at 18 flat. There's no clear sign of this thing bouncing. That's very interesting. And the VIX is very, very undervalued in a way. It looked like it was trying to bounce yesterday and it ended up just failing. So if it breaks below 18, I'm going to be watching 17.8. And if that fails, then there's 17.08. 17.06, sorry. But either way, I mean, this is still looking weak. There's no true sign of a bounce. And as it downtrends, if it breaks below 18, once again, that's going to be because of the markets just continuing to pump more and more and more. And I just want to note that the VIX is actually undervalued. So I do believe it's getting closer to its bottom and may take a bit of a while. The bottom could be in the 17s, low 17s, somewhere around there. And that just tells me that the market will likely reverse soon. It may take like another week or two because of the options chain. But once again, the VIX is still undervalued. It's looking bearish, but it is undervalued. You have to remember that and be very cautious when looking at the markets and the levels we're at. For Apple, Apple, that's a very, very strong looking daily candle. Uh, the bullish case that I mentioned yesterday did play out. I was actually aiming more bearish because of, once again, all the bearish uh, developments, the, the the bearish signals and all the you know fear that was coming from the Fed yesterday. Uh, but if you look at Apple, this is actually like super close to filling this daily gap around this 165 area. If it actually does that, it's going to retest 166. Could we break 166? It's a possibility. If it breaks it, this thing could pump to 16. I think this is 168 all the way up there, then possibly 170. I think the odds are favoring more upside for Apple, breaking above 166 and trying to get to 168. 
However, be very careful because in just a couple of weeks, Apple is going to have earnings and earnings may not be that strong for them. But anyways, we're looking more bullish. The more bearish possibility would be a break below 16. Uh, this is 163.5. We break below that. We'll retest almost 160. If that fails, then there's the gap below very close to 157. However, like I said, odds are favoring upside. Based off this daily candle, right? It's look, it looks very bullish. It's a bullish engulfing candle. And on top of that, we have the options chain, the market makers manip manipulating the stocks, and also other developments. AMD is relatively weak. I did mention to you guys that it's looking relatively weak, and that actually did continue to hold. Uh, if this thing could retest, if it could get above its major resistance around this almost 93 area, a little bit below 93, if it could break above to 93 plus, then this thing could try to get a retest of 95. It is a possibility. But overall, it still has some relative weakness to it. So I don't really see this as the best of trades as there's so many other better plays to be looking at. Google is looking strong again, up over another 2.61%. If we're bullish, this thing's going to retest 110. And if it breaks that, I mean, it could try to get all the way up to 112.5. If we're bearish, this thing is going to retest about 105 to 106 around there. And if that fails, then it could come all the way down to about 103. What do I think this is going to do? Like I said before, I'm prepared for anything depending on the bank earnings. But the odds and the technicals as of right now are now starting to look like we might get another pump before another development, before another top forms. I'm thinking Google is going to retest 110, maybe even break higher depending on how tomorrow goes. But the odds are favoring more upside. Meta looking nice. It actually hit 220. Pretty crazy stuff. If it breaks 220, uh, the zone I was watching was uh, 222.5, somewhere around there. And then there is a notorious 22, what is that? Uh, 225 that comes after that. If we do actually break, uh, 225 could come. Once again, pretty, pretty bullish. The daily candle looks very nice. If we're bearish, you know, there's 217 to watch for, then 214. If we're bullish, we could retest 222.5. And if we break that, then 225 could come. Once again, very, very bullish development. Like the other stocks, it's looking more bullish. Baba is looking pretty bullish as well to me. Uh, I don't oftentimes trade this, but we have this nice gap above all the way up to 99. It looks to me like it might actually reverse since we do have a potential reversal candle on us on the daily chart and retest uh, 99. If it breaks it, we could see this thing get back to the 100s. Now, if we're bearish, if the more bearish outcome comes, this thing could actually crash down pretty hard and eventually come down to like the 88th level over the next couple of days. The MECD is telling us it is slowing down a bit, but there is a possibility of another pump first before we do get a bearish development. In my opinion, it might actually pump tomorrow because of what's going on with the collective market. I am prepared for anything, of course, but I just want to note the odds are still favoring more upside. Netflix, 345 is where it's at. If we're bullish, the next major resistance is going to be at about 348 points, about 348. And if we break that, then 350 could come, followed by 352. Uh, if we're bearish, once again, we have to actually break below 340, and then this thing is going to retest 335. I think Netflix has more odds of upside and might actually try to break above this area tomorrow, depending on how earnings and et cetera go, but the odds are once again favoring upside. For the 10-year treasury yield, this is actually still pretty flat, not doing a whole lot. It is still breaking to the upside. And later on in the future, if this thing ends up tanking to fill this gap, that's going to be bullish for the markets. However, as it's actually showing some strength, if it keeps going and breaks above the 50 EMA, this could actually slow down the markets a bit uh, later on. And as these gaps above, if it does start to push up to fill these gaps very hard, that's going to be bearish for the market. So this is another like bearish signal. Uh, it does not mean the market has to like tank immediately because this is not necessarily breaking out. It's just pr pretty flat, only a 0.9%. We'll see what this does. Uh, I believe that if the market does pump more, it might end up coming down to fill the gap and then bounce. But later on, I don't know how long it's going to take. It may take another couple of days, another week or so. If this thing does start to break out later on, maybe in a few weeks, that could mark the top for the market. And this could actually cause 
downside in the markets later on. As once again, there is still a bearish divergence developing on SPY. It's just still developing and hasn't finished. And that tells me once again, the market has some strength and there is still more odds for upside. So what do I see for tomorrow on SPY? Once again, guys, I'm prepared for anything. It really depends on earnings, but the odds are favoring this thing getting closer to about, first off, if it breaks 214, then 26, not 2, 414. I'm saying so many numbers, guys. I'm sorry. If it breaks 414, this thing is going to pump all the way up to 416 very soon, at least 416, and completes the inverse head and shoulders I showed you. That's very likely to happen tomorrow. It, that is most likely what's going to happen, but I'm always prepared for anything just in case. All right. So thank you all for listening. Have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon because the long term is still incredibly bright. And peace out.